friends. So let's talk about um, some asynchronous set state stuff. So I've got this code sandbox. I got a link in the description for you um, that has a couple of examples. Somebody tweeted at me uh, yesterday um, asking for an example like this, and I thought it was a great one. So um, here I'm going to take a look at this. Uh, here, when when you open this zone sandbox, you're probably going to be in the project view, so you want to switch to current module view. And here, in the when, when you click between each of these examples, it'll render that example on on the right side. So here in the clear interval, um, we have this stopwatch that we can start and stop and clear. And this actually comes directly from um, my beginner React course. Uh, I actually got the original idea of this from my friend Matt Zabriskie, um, who created the original stopwatch component. I made a ton of changes to it since, um, but that I, I really like this, this component as a good example of set state in React. Um, but one feature of it is the way that it's updating the uh, value is it has this interval that it starts. And then when you, when you hit um, stop, then it clears the interval. And if you hit clear, then it will clear the interval and um, update the state. Um, oh, what? Sorry, that's, that was the wrong, wrong file. Spoiler alert. OK, so um, anyway, that's how it works. So let's see what happens when I start it and then I unmount it. So I've got this app here that has some state and um, I can change the show stopwatch state. And if that's uh, false, then we're going to render null. So here if I uncheck that, it's no longer rendered. So it's been unmounted and I'm getting this warning. Can't call set state or force update on an unmounted component. This is a no op. The, but it indicates a memory leak in your application to fix, cancel all subscriptions, asynchronous tests in the component will unmount method. Okay, so you can't really see any problem going on, but what's actually happening in memory is this set interval is actually still going on um, every millisecond or as fast as the browser can possibly make it. And um, it, uh, yeah, that's a bit of a problem uh, for a memory leak. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add a console.log here, here actually we'll do a date dot now so you can see the difference between between them. So if I hit start, you're gonna see that going up, and then I um, uncheck that, and it's still going. And what makes things even worse is if I click that, and I've mounted a new instance of this component. I start that one, and then I unmount that one. I make a new instance, start that one, unmount it, new instance, start that one, unmount it, new instance, start that one. Unmount it, and after a while, if you do this on your own machine, you might see this better. I'm not sure how well this is going to stream, but after a while, you're going to see that these numbers aren't updating as fast, and that's because you've got, um, I don't know, probably 10 instances now of this uh, component being rendered to the this page, and each and every one of them has a set interval um, that will run as quickly as possible to call set state on a component that doesn't exist anymore which is a no op, but like the warning says, it um, indicates a memory leak and we're starting to see that memory. You probably, I, I'm not sure how well you can tell on the, um, on the video recording, but I think you could probably tell it's actually not jumping up um, as awesomely as it was before. So here now, if I refresh the page, now uh, just thanks to the nature of JavaScript, like everything, it, it's not that React is unmounting anything, it's just like, it re reruns all the JavaScript from the start. So now if I click start, now it's gonna be going really nice. So um, yeah, how do we fix this problem? Well, just like the warning suggests, we can add a uh, component, whoops, my fingers were not on home row. Component will unmount. And here, uh, like generically for anything that you're going to be um, uh, writing with React, anytime you have some asynchronous stuff going on and then a callback that calls this dot set state. You wanna see if there's some way you can prevent that callback from being called when it no longer needs to be called. And in our case, we have set interval and we're, what's returned from set interval in the browser is a, an ID, which is a number. And you can use that and store that as an instance property. Here we're using this dot timer. Um, and then we can use clear interval to clear it. And uh, you can actually call clear interval on null and, and undefined and 
add a non ID thing and it. it's it's going to handle all that fine. So we don't need to check for whether this dot timer is defined or anything. So we can just put component while on mount clear interval uh, this dot timer. And now with that, we can start this and we can unmount it and you see the numbers aren't um, incrementing anymore. And I can keep doing this forever and um, my application performance will not suffer. So it's pretty easy, right? Like just a component will unmount clear interval. Um, and generally whatever APIs you're using to, um, uh, to uh, do some asynchronous stuff, it should expose some way to cancel um, or clear or, or to prevent the callback from being called any further. That's, that's the basic idea is like, let's make this callback not be called any longer. Okay, so what about things where you don't have that um, capability, like with promises? This is a sad fact of promises. You cannot cancel a promise. And so here I, I can click on this and I'm gonna get um, a random user from randomuser.me. Where's that URL right there? Uh, so that's, that's pretty handy, right? But um, the problem is that if this random user gets um, unmounted, then um, what comes after this await keyword, this asynchronous uh, stuff, uh, it's gonna be run. And so we're going to be calling set state on something that doesn't exist. And we can, um, my network is too fast. So I'm going to simulate a slower network. We're going to network and speed. Wow, okay, so we're gonna move this down to the bottom. I make my screen super duper small for your benefit. So you're welcome. Um, okay, so I'll just use the regular console here for that. I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff. I'm gonna change this to um, slow. And then I'll um, do click me and then untoggle show user. So click untoggle. And when that request finishes, we're gonna get this um, warning again. So how do we fix this one? This one's kind of tricky. Um, I'm, there's an actually an Axios specific way to a mechanism to cancel the request. And it's not canceling a promise, um, but it, it allows you to cancel the request. We'll do that here in a second, because not always will you be using Axios or maybe you're using a different promise-based API and then it doesn't give you a cancel mechanism. So something that's kind of interesting is um, until classes, uh, React actually had a this dot is mounted. So it, we could say if this dot is mounted, then we can call this dot set state. And here, let me pull up my dev tools again, make sure that we are set to slow. And then I'll click and uncheck. And we're not going to get that warning, but we are going to get a different warning here. This one saying is mounted, is deprecated in plain JavaScript React classes. Instead, make sure to clean up subscriptions and pending requests and a component will unmount to prevent memory leaks. Well, thanks, except um, promises can't be canceled React. So maybe we should like think about keeping this is mounted thing around. Um, I don't know, but uh, it's uh, not terrible to get around this. So we could say, um, uh, we'll make a underscore is mounted. That would be false, initialized to false. And then we'll have a component did mount. And we'll say this dot is mounted is true. And component will unmount. This dot is mounted equals false. And then instead of using that and getting the warning all the time, we'll just use our own tracking of is mounted. And then we'll go back here, slow. We'll click and unclick, uncheck, and that request finished, but we're not getting any warnings. It's not uh, logging anything um, because it was unmounted. Um, and it all still works too. So if we do wait for the result to come back, then, then it'll work. So anyway, that's, that's how you can, uh, like one way that you could get around this problem. It's not a super great um, way to, to solve the problem. Like, a little bit boilerplatey, but I don't think it's like it could be worse. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at a Axios specific thing because the person who asked me this was asking specifically about Axios. Um, 
So Axios has this capability for uh, canceling requests. And actually, I don't have it memorized, so I'm just going to show you the uh, the solution um, because yeah, I didn't think to to practice this. Um, but yeah, so we have Axios, and it has this cancel token thing, and so you can create a new cancel token source, and we're going to set that on our instance this dot cancel token source, and then when we make a request, we're going to say the cancel token is this dot cancel token source dot token. And we'll put that in a try catch because if this cancel token is canceled, then it's going to um, throw an error or the promise will be rejected. We're using wait, so it's going to throw an error. And here we can check if Axios is cancel. If that error was because it was canceled, then we're just going to ignore it. Um, otherwise, we'll propagate the error or handle it some other way or whatever else. Um, and then finally, when the request is all done, we'll, we'll set the cancel token source to, to null. And then in component, we'll unmount. Uh, that's where we'll go ahead and cancel. So it's a lot of work, um, but uh, it's, it's definitely possible. One thing that I didn't consider here is if I click it a million times and um, then unmount, like I don't even know what's gonna happen there. Um, probably not anything good, but uh, so yeah, like you'll want to keep track of your cancel tokens. Um, maybe I don't I don't know, or probably disable the button while the request is in flight or something. But anyway, hopefully that's helpful. Um, yeah. So there's a, a comment from Trump W. Not. It looks like a friend of mine, but I'm not sure if that is who it, I think it is. Anyway, uh, but the they mention I can imagine everyone wrapping every set state call in it if this dot is mounted. Um, yeah, so you'd only really want to do this um, this wrapping in the is mounted thing. Um, you only want to do this in something that's happening asynchronously. So like a callback or anything coming after an await keyword. Um, because if you do this after or around every single one of them, you're going to have like really complicated code and people are going to be bending over backwards to make sure they don't break it when in fact it doesn't even need to exist there in the first place. Um, so yeah, generally, like, I really strongly discourage using this if you can do it um, pretty much any other way. Um, but it is, um, it is there for you if, if that's what you want to do. Um, the audio is a bit too quiet. Sorry about that. Here, let me turn it up. Is that louder? Maybe that's better. <clears throat> yeah, I got into the red with that little cough. So hopefully that's better in the future. It will be it will be louder. Um, cool, yeah. So there, there's your example. Um, I thought I'd mention one other thing really quick. So um, I've been doing these for a little while now, and um, somebody suggested that I um, that I uh, turn on this super chat thing. So if you want to, you can click send a super chat and actually send me money, which would be kind of cool if you wanted to do that. Uh, so if, if you think the video is neat, then you can send a super chat and um, that, uh, that would be nice. Okay, cool. Uh, so I hope this was helpful to everybody and uh, I'll see you all on the other side. Bye.